My mum was uh, the biggest drive in my football career, especially when I was younger, still is now. She'd tell me every day that I was the best player in the world, and you know, like mums do, but you never really believe them because that's their job to tell you to do that. I've been friends with Fran since we were, I think we were about eight. That's kind of the earliest memory I have of meeting Fran. And over the years, especially with everything that's happened, she's become like a sister. And then from then on, she couldn't get rid of you. <laughs> yeah, literally, I've pretty much lived here for the rest of my life. We had a, an analysis evening. It was a kind of a, every end of season we would, have, we would meet up with staff uh, in the academy when we were about 14, 15, and they would tell us how we'd done over the season. And I remember and we were in the waiting room while Fran and Denny were in the actual um, meeting with the coach and staff. And my dad actually said to me, he said, uh, Denny's head's on the table. And Fran ran in and said, well, she was immediately crying and said that um, her mum had collapsed or that she'd fainted or passed out. So obviously m my dad and myself ran in to see and yeah, I obviously just remember seeing Denny there. Denny as a person, she was, you wouldn't mess with her. So she was fierce, she was strong, she was loyal, and she loved Fran as much as anything. And I think you could see that in everything that she did for her. My mum, that was Disneyland. Used to go every year. I would get home from school. She'd make sure that she was bang on home at five o'clock to make me pasta and then take me to training at half five wait there, whether it's raining, you know, sun, snow, everything, and then bring me home. Uh, would get up in the mornings with me, sometimes drag me out of bed when I didn't want to go. Um, so she was definitely the biggest influencer in my career. Before my mum passed away, I was a very extroverted person. I was very outgoing. I didn't care what people thought about me. And I think when my mum passed away, I was very young. So I became very introverted. I became very quiet. I became very anxious of what people thought about me. Um, I still, to this day, have them traits now. I don't think that has completely gone away. There was a time when Fran had to take a step back from football because she was so um, distraught by the whole thing and couldn't, couldn't concentrate and wasn't enjoying it. I just remember looking at myself one day and I just said, this isn't how you should live your life. You shouldn't feel miserable when you know, you, you've got such an amazing opportunity now to, to make a difference and to, to do something that my mum would always wanted me to have done. Um, and I think I felt a bit selfish at the fact that I, I had stopped. Um, but then obviously now looking back, it was definitely the right time to, to do it and work on myself as a person and then I could build back up um, with my relationship with football. It was so long ago now though, doesn't it? But it was like, it's like a decade ago now. Yeah, yeah, 10 years, 10 years this year. When I first joined Chelsea, it took me a long time to come out of my shell and to, to be the person that I am now and be as confident as I am now. And I think 10 years ago, even, even less than that, maybe eight years ago, people probably wouldn't have liked me as a person. I didn't like me as a person. Um, so I think it took me a long time to, to find myself and to start loving myself and taking care of myself again. I spent a lot of my time at Chelsea at first injured. I had a sit down with the woman who I went with privately and she said, look Fran, if you don't get this right now, you won't be able to play football again. It was, it was a real eye opener for me because no one had told me that. Everyone had told me, you know, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, you can just get on with it, you'll get better, stuff like that. No one had actually told me the extent of how bad my injury was. The best decision I think I ever made when I was injured was to get myself a puppy um, because I think when I was at home, I wasn't laying on the sofa moping about my injury. I was laying on the sofa thinking, where's the dog gone? He's not in the room, he's gone, he's chewing something. He's not going toilet on his mat. Like there's something going on that I don't know about when he's being quiet. So I think that was the best, best decision that I made mentally. And I think one of the other girls who was injured as well got herself a dog and she said it was the best psychological help that she could have ever got. So if you're injured, Get yourself a dog and you'll get through it. <laughs> I 
I think football is massively helpful for people's mental health. And in Fran's case, I think it was the thing that helped her kind of move forward. And had she not had football and a couple of people around her, I don't know where she'd be and I don't know what she'd be doing. Yeah, this is cute. She hold hands. When I did my first interview, I remember doing it for the Daily Mail when I really spoke about everything um, to do with my mental health and my mum. And when I first did it, I was very naive. I didn't realise what kind of effect it would have. I think I was just talking like I had done for, for many years about the situation. And I think now, as I've got older, I realise that, you know, there are many, many people that are put in the same awful situations. It's never easy, no matter what age it is. Um, and I think, you know, the more that people read about it in the, in the media, they know that it's more open for them to talk about it to their friends, to their family, or to someone who can help them. I've accepted now that it's, it's okay not to, not to be okay. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing that I would, you know, emphasize to anyone um, whenever I do speak about it, you know, that it is okay to be upset and it is okay to need to talk to someone. And that's what I think I would emphasize to anyone is try not to shut yourself away, try and be open about it and try and, you know, don't think that people are gonna judge you because you cry about something. Like it's, it's a normal part of life. And unfortunately what happened to me happens to so many other people. Yeah. So it's, it's something that it does happen all the time. So you have to try and be open. You have to try and talk about it and you try and, you know, overcome it with people around you who care about you and who love you. From everything she's achieved over the, since the day I've known her, everything she's been through, I couldn't be prouder of her. I think this last year is obviously monumental and I think it's, she's achieved things that her mum would certainly be ecstatic at, but I couldn't be prouder of her. I, I don't know if I'll ever be more proud of how she's Pretty big deal now, huh? got herself from where she was to hit where she is now. And the winner is Fran Kirby. <laughs> I'm really excited about what's going to come up next and I'm really excited to see how much I can push myself um, on the pitch and off the pitch and I want to continue to prove myself um, week in week out, scoring goals, um, enjoying my football, playing with a smile on my face, playing with my friends um, and you know and I think as long as I'm doing that then I'm sure you know there's a lot more to come, come from me as a player and as a footballer.